Hello. Here we are. Yeah. Beautiful, aren't you? Mm? You're beautiful. Are you beautiful? Hello, sir. How are you? How are you doing, bro? There we are. It's a bit of there. Whoops. Oh yeah. Not for you. You want one as well? You get one as well? Yeah. Hmm. God, oh, so good, aren't you? Yeah. You want another one? I don't know how many you're supposed to have. There's one for you. I'm eating a bit of carrot as well. We're going to just have a little Bible study uh, called Freedom in Christ. Um, just for half an hour and then I've got to go off and do some stuff. So I'm just having a dinner break at home. And guys, guys, I've got some more for you. I've got some more. I got, I got, I got some more. Yeah, I've not finished. There's more here. Hey, <laughs> there we are. There's another one here. Yeah, you're loving it, aren't you? <laughs> eh? Aren't you beautiful? Yeah, you are beautiful. Let me have a bite. Okay. Last one. Last one. The horse is there. <laughs> Come here. Are you yeah, gorgeous, aren't you? Are you gorgeous? You are absolutely gorgeous. Come here. Yeah? You are amazing, aren't you amazing? Look at that for a horse, that is amazing. Hmm? Yep, we're gonna have a Bible study now. So we're just gonna have a little study. <coughs> just treated the horses to uh, a bit of a, a, um, Bit of a treated the horses to a bit of a carrot fest there. So um, if you turn to Galatians, and uh, we're just going to have a little Bible study. Uh, just come home for dinner break, so I'll be going out again in a minute. If you turn to Galatians, the book of Galatians. And uh, just put that there. That's better. That's better, isn't it? Whoops, a daisy. Is that there? Oh, I'll have to. Whoops, a daisy. I'll have to. Uh, just um, leave it like that so we'll look at Galatians so I'll just pray dear father we thank you for this day and we thank you for your love and grace and father we just pray as we look at your word that you bless these thoughts uh, for your glory in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. I'm trying to train some of the younger men that work with me so 
we had a Bible study yesterday in Galatians and uh, these are just some thoughts uh, from that Bible study so uh, you turn to Galatians chapter 1 it says Paul an apostle not of men neither by man but by Jesus Christ and God the Father who raised him from the dead and all the brethren which are with me unto the churches of Galatia grace be to you and peace from God our Father and from uh, the, our Lord Jesus Christ who gave himself for our sins that he might deliver us from this present evil world according to the will of God and our Father to whom be glory for ever and ever amen I marvel that you are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel which is not another but there be there some that trouble you and pervert the gospel of Christ but though we are an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you let him be accursed we said before so say I now again if any man preach any other gospel unto you than that you have received let him be accursed for do I now persuade men or God or do I seek to please men for if I yet please men I should not be the servant of Christ but I certify you brethren that the gospel which was preached of me is not after man for I neither receded of man neither was I taught it but by the revelation of Jesus Christ <clears throat> for you have heard of my conversations in time past in the Jews religion that beyond measure I persecuted the church of God sorry I got a bit carrot in me and wasted it and profiting the Jews religion above many my equals in my own nation being more exceedingly zealous of the traditions of my fathers. But when it pleased God who separated me from my mother's womb and called me by his grace to reveal his son in me, that I might preach him among the heathen, immediately I conferred not with flesh and blood. Neither went I up to Jerusalem to them which were apostles before me, but I went to into Arabia and returned again unto Damascus. Then after three years I went up to Jerusalem to see Peter and abode with him fifteen days. But other of the apostles saw I none, save James, the Lord's brother. Now the things which I write unto you, behold, before God I lie not. Afterwards I came into the region of Syria and Cilicia, and was unknown by face unto the churches of Judea, which were in Christ, which persecuted us in times past, now preached the faith which was once destroyed, and they glorified God in me. So, if you look at the first verse, it says Paul an apostle not of men neither by man so it gives you a clue what the book's about a lot of the books about defending Paul's apostleship there were these Judaizers that had come in who were trying to get people to be circumcised uh, to get the Gentiles circumcised and what they were saying is that this is the way you get saved this is the way you come to know God and in order to get this teaching within the church they had to get Paul out of the way so they attacked Paul mercilessly so Paul is having to defend his apostleship and we see that where he says in verse 12 for I neither receded of man neither was I taught it but by the revelation of Jesus Christ so he's saying look I'm an apostle because I had a, a direct revelation of this gospel from Jesus if you remember Paul often talked about the mystery of the gospel and Paul was, Paul was taught the importance of preaching the gospel to the Gentiles as well as the Jews and then he, he talks about he met Peter um, and the, the Apostles then after three years I went up to Jerusalem to see Peter and aboard with him 15 days so now he's like saying look I'm an Apostle and I was accepted by Peter and the other leaders and in the midst of this Paul pulls no punches Paul is not going to compromise the gospel and you know there's a danger of legalism coming into the church where we're legalistic we can uh, be legalistic uh, doctrinally we try to make people do and think the way we want to think we can be legalistically super spiritually we can have a, a super spiritual mentality and try to force that on people but Paul had none of it Paul was saying no uh, you're free in Christ don't be shackled by being forced to uh, uh, have circumcision 
and uh, be free in Christ you're saved in, in, in his grace and so Paul rounds on these false teachers by saying in verse 8 but though we are an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto to you than that which we have preached unto you let him be accursed now Paul says this a few times that anybody who's not preaching the gospel let him be accursed and we think of um, Muhammad who said he saw an angel and he says here even if but though we are an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached let him be accursed so you know there are people like Muhammad who said he saw an angel there's Joseph Smith who said he saw an angel there are these people who said they've seen angels but they preach a false gospel and we're not to believe them we're to believe what what the scriptures say you know I love that verse there's a verse in Isaiah where it says to the law and to the testimony you know so let's go to chapter 2 so Paul says, The fourteen years I went up again to Jerusalem with Barnabas and took Titus with me also, and I went up by revelation and communicated unto them the gospel which I preached among the Gentiles, but privately to them were the reputation, lest by any means I should run or run in vain. But neither Titus, who was with me, being a Greek, was compelled to be circumcised. So I'll see if I can just get this out. I can move I can move it about then a little bit so so we go um, we sort of go to the Word of God so it says but neither Titus who was with me being a Greek was compelled to be circumcised and that because of false brethren unawares brought in who came in privily to spy out our liberty which we have in Christ that they might bring us into bondage um, it's interesting when you look at Paul's ministry it was a constant constant battle against people follow, following him around these Judaizers following him around and, and trying to stir up trouble trying to drag back people under the law and under on, on um, doing things that they'd been set free from and it was a constant battle. You think of our Lord; it was a constant battle, wasn't it? He, every, he was serving, you know, and he and he was doing the Father's will, but he had a constant opposition all the time. And you know, you might think, well, why is it that it's always hard for you in your ministry? Well, I think it's because you're doing God's will, and if you're doing God's will, it's just going to be a battle. There's going to be this constant attack upon your ministry in some way then he says um, to whom we gave place verse 5 chapter 2 to whom we gave place to whom we gave place by subjection no not for an hour that the truth of the gospel might continue with you but of these who seem to be somewhat whatsoever they were it maketh no matter to me God accepted no man's person for they who, seem, they who seem to be somewhat in confidence added nothing to me so Paul is saying look they, they seem to be big shots in the church who were trying to oppose him but he said I don't care you know at the end of the day it's what it's what uh, it's what God thinks at the end of the day you know but contrawise, when they saw that the gospel of circumcision was committed unto me, and the gospel of the circumcision was unto Peter, for he that wrought effectually in Peter to the apostleship of the circumcision, the same was mighty in me towards the Gentiles. And when James and Cephas and John, who seemed to be pillars, perceived the grace that was given to me, they gave to me and Barnabas the right hand of fellowship, that we should go unto the heathen and they unto the circumcision. So Paul, again, is reiterating uh, that he's an apostle and he's been accepted by John, Peter and the other apostles um, and, and Paul is still not bothered what anybody thinks even if he has to oppose the apostles he will if, that, if, if they go against what God says he goes about Peter but when I saw that they walked not uprightly according to the truth of the gospel I said, Pe 
unto Peter before them all, If thou being a Jew livest after the manner of the Gentiles, and not as do the Jews, why compellest thou the Gentiles to live as do the Jews? Who are Jews by nature and not sinners of the Gentiles, knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by faith of Jesus Christ. Even we are believed in Jesus Christ, that we might be justified by faith of Christ, and not by works of the law. For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. So these Judaizers were coming in, and the Apostle Peter kind of cowered to them, and was beginning to make uh, Gentiles um, circumcised. And Paul is, he takes Peter to task and says, you know, were we not saved by grace? Well, if we're saved by grace, why are you forcing the Gentiles to get circumcised? So Paul takes on Peter, you know, and uh, sometimes we, we need to be courageous and sometimes courage needs to be that we stand up against even those in the church that we love, but they've, they've gone astray and we need to correct them. We also need humility in being corrected. Paul was willing to be corrected by the apostles. He subjected his message to their correction. And then Peter was willing to be corrected by the Apostle Paul. And we think of Philippians chapter 2 where the Lord humbled himself and made himself of no reputation. And if you're so proud that you're not willing to be corrected, then you live in a dangerous Christian life because you might go into error. And because you're not willing to be corrected, you will also lead other people astray. So we should always be willing to be corrected. We should always have that humility about us, as Peter and Paul did. Paul subjected himself to Peter and the apostles, but Peter was willing to be corrected by Paul. Are you, be, are you willing to be corrected? If you're too proud to be corrected, then, you know, there's something seriously wrong with you. And he says we're justified by faith, we're not justified by the law. Paul talks about the law as a schoolmaster to bring us to Christ. We don't throw out the law, we don't say the law's not relevant. But what we're saying is we don't have to obey the law to be saved. So we go to chapter 3. O foolish Galatians, verse 1, who hath bewitched you that you should not obey the truth before whose eyes Christ had been evidently set forth crucified among you. Only would I learn of you, receive ye the Spirit by the work of the law or by the hearing of faith. He's, re he's now arguing how they receive the Spirit. And his first argument is, look at your own experience. How did you come to know the Spirit of God? Not by works, but by believing in Jesus. Are you so foolish, verse three, having begun a sp the Spirit, are you now made perfect in the flesh? Have you suffered so many things in vain, if, you, if yet in vain? Know ye that, verse 7, Know ye therefore that they which are of faith are the children of Abraham. And the scripture foreseeing that God would justify the heathen through faith preached before the gospel unto Abraham, saying, In thee shall thy nations be blessed. So then they which be of faith are blessed with faithful Abraham. So Paul is now making his argument for the gospel and he's saying that um, we didn't come into the kingdom by circumcision we came into the kingdom by faith in Christ so now he goes back to the Old Testament and he proves that faith comes before circumcision and so he goes to the life of Abraham and Abraham was given a promise and 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 so Abraham believed that promise and because he believed that promise it was accounted to him as righteousness so Paul is showing that it's by faith in Jesus Christ that we're saved and not by our own works and he's arguing now from the life of Abraham verse 13 we go on Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law being made a curse for us for it is written cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree that the blessing of Abraham might come to the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Brethren, I speak after the manner of men, though it be but a man's covenant, that if you be, confer that 
yet if it be confirmed no man disannul or addeth thereof now to the now to the Abraham and his seed were the promise made he he saith not to seeds as of many but as of one and to thy seed which is Christ so he's saying that Abraham was given a promise it was accounted to him as righteousness and it was a symbol of the seed that Abraham would receive a, a, a number of people who would come to salvation through Christ and he re reiterates the gospel now a mediator is not a mediator of one but God is one is the law then against the promise of God God forbid for if there had been a law given which could have given life verily righteousness should have been by the law but the scripture had concluded all under sin that the promise by faith of Jesus Christ might be given to them that believe but faith came but before ca faith came we were kept under law and shut up unto the faith which should afterwards be revealed wherefore the law was our schoolmaster to bring us to Christ that we might be justified by faith but after the faith is come we are no longer under the schoolmaster for you are all the children of faith in Christ Jesus for as many of you have been baptized in Christ are put on Christ there is neither Jew nor Greek there is neither bond nor free there is neither male or female for you are all one in Christ Jesus and if you be in Christ then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise so quite a lot of meat in that isn't there um, but the law i.e. the Torah um, is a schoolmaster to bring us to Christ it, it reveals our sin and reveals our need of Christ and you say well what about the Ten Commandments do, 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 do we have the Ten Commandments today and the answer is yes we obey the Ten Commandments but we obey it in the spirit that we have the spirit of God in us to obey it but the, but the law, the commandments, whether the Ten Commandments or the whole of the Torah, they cannot justify us before God. They cannot make us right before God. It's only faith in Christ that makes us right. You see, every one of us is guilty. Every one of us is a sinner. And if we came before God in our own sin, then we'd be condemned and judged as, and go to hell. But Christ steps in our place and dies on our behalf sheds his blood for us because he he took the punishment that you and I deserve and when we believe in him and trust in him we're justified we're declared right before God because of what Jesus has done for us and that is the gospel it's faith in Jesus which brings us this salvation and it's freedom in Christ that sets us free from condemnation and we have this freedom in Christ and Paul is trying to hold on to this freedom for the Gentile believers at this in the, in Galatia in the area of Galatia, so so we'll just have a, a little break for a minute and uh, just uh, I'll let you see the horses. So I'll continue to talk while we look at the horses. So so then in uh, chapter 4, it says, Now I say, verse 1, Now I say that the heir, as long as he is a child, differs nothing from a servant, though he be lord of all. But he's under tutors and governors, until the time appointed of the Father. Even so, we, when we were children, were in bondage under the elements of the world. But when the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth his Son, made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. And because ye are sons, God has set forth the Spirit. God has set forth the Spirit of his Son, into your hearts crying Abba Father where thou art no more a servant but a son and if a son then an heir of God through Christ and what Paul is saying there is that <clears throat> it's like the Old Testament is like the stabilizers on a bike and then when we grow up we take the stabilizers off 
So the Old Testament is showing us the need of Christ. Showing us the need of, of Christ and the need for the fullness to come in that Christ would come in his fullness to die for us and be resurrected that we might receive the fullness of the Spirit of God. And that's what he's saying there. Magnificent animals. I just love these animals. So that that that's what he it's saying there. And then verse six, and because you are sons, God has set forth his spirit of his son into your hearts, crying, Abba Father, where thou art no more a servant, but a son, and if then a son, then an heir of God through Christ. We need to enjoy the Christian life. We are heirs of God. We are sons and daughters of the living God, we should be rejoicing in the Spirit and all the wonderful blessings that God has given us through Christ. Verse 8, how, how be it then when you know not God, uh, you, sorry, how be it then you knew not God, you did service unto them which by nature are not God's. But now after that you have known God, or rather are known of God, how turn you again to the weak and beggarly elements wherein you desire again to be in bondage. So Paul is saying to the Gentiles, you, you, you didn't know God at first, you knew all these different gods, but now you've come to know God, but now you're going back to this circumcision malarkey stuff, you're just going into bondage again, you need to set yourself free, and remember that freedom came by faith in Christ. Verse 13, you know how through infirmity of the flesh I preached the gospel unto you at first, and my temptation which was in my flesh, you despised not, nor rejected, but received me as an angel of God, even as Christ Jesus. Here's a pastor's heart. He loves his flock, and he's saying, look, you know, you loved me, and I loved you. Verse 16, I am therefore become your enemy, because I tell you the truth. So Paul's saying, look, I'm your true pastor. I'm the one that really cares for you. And if you're a real pastor, you really care for your flock. You really love your people. And, and one of the things that you need to pray for in, in ministry is to love people. If you don't love people, then, you know, you need to pray that God will give you that love in, in ministry. Uh, verse 18, But it is good to be zealously affected in a good thing, and not only when I am present with you. My little children, see how much he loves them. My little children of whom I travail in birth again until Christ be formed in you. I desire to be, pre be present with you now and to change my voice, for I stand in doubt of you. Tell me, you that desire to be under the law, do you not hear the law? For it is written that Abraham had two sons, the one of bondage and the other of free wo woman. So he goes into. Uh, Sarah and Agar there, which things are allegory for these are the two covenants, the one from the Mount Sinai which genereth bondage, which is Agar, for this Agar is Mount Sinai in which Arabia and answereth to Jerusalem, which is now is, and is in bondage with her children. But Jerusalem which is above is free, which is the mother of us all. So Agar is a symbol, Agar is a symbol of bondage and uh, so is a symbol of freedom. Chapter 5 Stand fast therefore in the liberty wherein Christ had made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. So it's so easy for us to get entangled in bondage. Um, you know, somebody could go up to somebody, uh, uh, you know, uh, and tell somebody, you have to do this, you have to do that. It might be, uh, you have to use a certain spiritual gift, you have to do it. But then you're putting people in bondage. They're free to use the gifts that God has given them. 
you don't force people to use a gift. It, it, people need to discover their gift, what God has given them to do, and, and then they to do it according out of love and obedience to God, not because you've kind of forced them to do it. And, and very often in leadership, we can you can try and force people to do things rather than let them be free in Christ and, and walk in that freedom. But in salvation, um, we can put burdens on people and, and say people have to do this and do that to get saved. But all they have to do is to repent and believe in Jesus Christ. That's the way to be saved. That is the way uh, to be saved. So, Christ has become of no effect unto you. Whoever you are justified by the law, you have fallen from grace. But we, through the Spirit, wait for the hope of righteousness. You did run well. Who did hinder you that you should not obey the truth? So, we've always got to be vigilant. Because if you remember reading this book, people crept in, false teachers crept in. So we've always got to be vigilant against false, teach, false teaching. But also those who are walking in the Lord, who are faithful and are sound, we can also slip we can also slip into error people who are sincere and following the truth can also slip and we've got to be careful that we don't do that i have confidence in you through the lord that you will be none otherwise minded but he that troubleth you shall bear the judgment whosoever he is and i brethren if i yet preach circumcision why do you I yet suffer persecution then is the offense of the cross ceased So, if you're really preaching the gospel, you'll be persecuted. You shouldn't preach the gospel to court persecution. There are preachers, street preachers especially, who uh, have a martyr complex and want to be martyrs and want, want to be persecuted. But we shouldn't court persecution. But we should realise, though, if we do preach the truth and preach the word of God, we will be persecuted. And I love this passage here, verse 16 of chapter 5. For the flesh lusteth against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary one to the other, so that you cannot do the things that you would. But if you be led of the spirit, you are not under law. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanliness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulation, wrath, strife, sedition, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings and such like of which I tell you before as I have told also you in time past that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God and I love this but the fruit of the Spirit is love joy peace long-suffering gentleness goodness faith meekness temperance against such there is no law so the fruit of the Spirit so we need to pray that God would manifest the fruit of the Spirit in our lives, that God would manifest His grace in our lives. And, you know, when we believe in Jesus, the Holy Spirit comes in our hearts. Look at these horses here. Uh, the Holy Spirit comes in our hearts and gives us new life. And, and, and that new life will manifest itself in the fruit of the Spirit. We, we, we'll, we begin to grow in love and joy and peace and um, it might be a long time coming uh, but the fruit will come as we trust the Lord and the Holy Spirit will work uh, in a wonderful way in our lives for some it will be dramatic and quick for others like myself <laughs> it will be a long process but we're being changed from glory to glory folks uh, and it's wonderful now we're in chapter 6 so for this study I should have said this at the beginning you're better off just reading the book of Galatians fully, make notes, and then just go over it with this video as a prompter, as a reminder, and, and, and a double teaching and a refresher to the book of Galatians. We could have gone into the background of the book of Galatians. Uh, there are various theories of uh, was he writing to North or South Galatia and all the rest of it. We could have gone into some of the background, but I just wanted to give some devotional thoughts from the book and we're in our final chapter so let's continue
so <clears throat> brethren if a man be overtaken in a fault ye which are spiritual restore such a one in the spirit of meekness considering thyself lest also thou also be tempted so whenever you're correcting somebody it should be done with humility it should also be done in private um, you shouldn't be rebuking a brother or a sister in public in front of other Christians or non-Christians because that that's not right that's not that's not a good thing to do if you've got an issue with a brother and there or a sister and they need correcting you take them aside privately and you have a word with them brethren and, and so that 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 means you 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 go in humility brethren if a man be overtaken in a fault which you are spiritual restore such as one in the spirit of meekness considering thyself lest also thou be tempted notice it's restoration not demolition the the ministry of of correcting people is a ministry of restoration not demolition there's something wrong if as christians we want to demolish people and destroy people's ministries or de destroy people's lives it should be a, a desire to see that brother or that sister restored uh, and back to their full joy, full peace in the Lord and full service, whatever they've been doing in the Lord. Verse 2, bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. It says in the last days, uh, people will be lovers of the self and love will die. People's love will grow cold. Let's fan into flame love in our lives. For if a man think himself to be something when he is nothing, he will deceive himself. So easy to slip into pride. So easy to slip into pride. Especially if, if people are thanking you or praising you or, um, or maybe you don't get praise and, and you're, you're doing work for the Lord and you, and you, and you don't get thanked. And, and then someone else comes along and they get thanked and, and pride can set in where you're, you become really upset because you, you haven't had the attention. And it's so easy for pride to come in. And we can be so easily wounded. Uh, and the antidote to that is to keep our eyes focused on Christ and remember that whatever we do, we, we do it for Christ and we're serving Him. And He is our rewarder. He is our rewarder. I think of uh, two missionaries and uh, they came back from the mission field, they retired and they retired from the mission field and it was a time when a president was uh, being uh, received in the city and everybody came out and a car was out with banners and big possession for the president and oh it was wonderful and these two missionaries came to the city at the same time nobody there to welcome them nobody cared about them they had to live in a little crummy bed sit little flat somewhere in the city and the guy said to his wife like, you know I'm really upset nobody's here to people are greeting the president but we've been serving on the mission field and nobody's here to greet us and he realized that he's not doing it for men, he's doing it for Christ. And he'll get his reward in heaven. Let him that is taught in the word communicate unto him that teacheth in all good things. Be not deceived, God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he shall reap. For he that soweth to this flesh shall reap corruption. But he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit soweth uh, reap everlasting life so we've got to be careful not to walk in sin if we walk in sin and continue to do so we'll reap negativity destruction if we walk in the spirit we'll reap life everlasting as we have therefore opportunity so let us do good unto all men especially them who are of the household of faith and I love this bit and we'll, we'll just get this on camera and get it on camera. But God forbid that I should glory save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. Isn't that beautiful? So we've come to the end. These horses can run 
They can run in the field and they can run in a wonderful freedom. They've got all this space to run. All this space to enjoy. And they're free. Joy in the day and in the and and in the in, in in the wonder and beauty of this day. Imagine these horses now just having chains put upon their legs and a ball of chain on their legs, and they just couldn't move, and they just had to stand there. It would restrict their freedom and spoil the blessing of being in this field. Galatians is, is a book about freedom. Galatians is a book about freedom. It's a book about staying in the liberty of Christ, knowing that it's through Christ that we're saved, not by our own ability, not by what we do. It's about being in Christ and trusting in Christ. And so easily in our own lives we can condemn ourselves. So easy in our lives we can... Um, put burdens on ourselves that are, uh, that are not of God you know we can become workaholics where we're working, working, working uh, in ministry and we just continue uh, and continue and continue to um, just continue to uh, be busy, 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 but it really what we're doing is that has become our salvation and it becomes a burden. Um, so easily we can put other people uh, in, in bondage by saying you have to do this or you have to do that and if you don't do this or if you don't do that you're not saved. I mean, the classic ones is years ago uh, only 50 years ago, people would say, you're not a Christian if you put makeup on. You're not a Christian if you, if you don't wear a headscarf or if you don't, um, if you don't um, turn up on church on time or whatever, or if you don't turn up at church with a suit. You know, these are not things that make us saved. But we can make them and put them on people as if, Unless you do these things, you're not saved. Unless you do these things, you're not justified by the Lord. And, but all of us are guilty. All of us are guilty of binding, putting people in bondage and putting ourselves in bondage. That doesn't mean to say we ignore the Ten Commandments. The Ten Commandments are there for all time. We're to obey the Ten Commandments. But we obey out of the Spirit of God, but, and we obey because we have faith in Christ. And this is so important, that, that, that we have faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And, and we're to walk in that freedom. So, you know, Luther, uh, it's the anniversary of the Reformation, and, and Luther was in terrible bondage. He, he tried to save himself by whipping himself by obeying the Catholic Church, by obeying the indulgences and, 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 and he wasn't getting any freedom, he wasn't getting any sense of relationship with God and, and then he realised th the great bolt lightning, the great life, the great power that came in his life he realised it's faith, faith in Christ, faith in Jesus, that is the freedom charter and it set him free and it set many free from the shackles of the Catholic Church which had bound people in bondage with false teaching and false things to do that were nothing to do with salvation but a blinded people from the simplicity that was in Christ we need to read this book every generation needs to rediscover this book it set Luther three free it set John Wesley free. John Wesley uh, was a minister. John Wesley was a minister um, and a Church of England minister and he went to America to be a missionary and he was in bondage. He didn't find any peace. 
and he fell in love with a woman and this woman married somebody else and Wesley wouldn't accept them to communion and the people who were there uh, in America chased him out of the town and he ran home and he came back to England he was dejected he was discouraged he just felt a failure and uh, a Moravian guy asked him to come to a Moravian meeting and the preacher read uh, the preface of Luther's commentary on Galatians and Wesley said my heart was strangely warmed and through through that Wesley became a great preacher of the gospel throughout the land of England because he was set free from religion and from the bondage of religion so enjoy your liberty enjoy the freedom in Christ enjoy the presence of the Holy Spirit enjoy that you're in the new kingdom enjoy the fact that Christ lives in you the hope of glory that you are a son and daughter of the living God you have been set free from bondage you have been set free from the shackles of religion from the shackles of men's ideologies and ideas you've been set free from the wrath of God and the judgment of God for now there is no condemnation to them that are in Christ so walk in that freedom enjoy that freedom live in that freedom the freedom to know God the freedom to live in God the freedom to be blessed with the Holy Spirit in your life you have liberty in Christ you are clean you are washed in the blood of the Lamb you are a new creature in Christ you are saved and born again my friend so be free in Christ God bless you don't forget my website, jasonburnspreacher.com. Don't forget um, my Facebook, which is more Bible teaching of other preachers. Uh, I've just put some videos of Rosaira Butterfield. Rosaira Butterfield, uh, a woman who was a lesbian but has now repented. and She's a Christian, born-again Christian, and she shares a, a story about how she come out of the lesbian culture. Um, you could listen... Uh, you could go on my Facebook, you'll see good Bible teaching material like that, and then uh, and preachers like Alistair Begg, Sinclair Ferguson, and many others. And then if you go on my Twitter, you'll find material. You you will find uh, material where uh, on apologetics, mainly to Islam, but uh, material that will defend the faith. So I hope that's been a blessing and I hope that's been an encouragement. It's just a, a little devotional thinking on the book of Galatians. Uh, it's my dinner time so I've just been having a dinner break in the house. So that's why I've been doing, uh, able to do this video and I just hope it was a blessing to you. Uh, so you could read the book of Galatians and take my meditations and thoughts and, and, and go over it again and just imbibe it in your spirit. Also if you go to third millennium ministries third millennium ministries look at uh, the series the heart of Paul's of theology the heart of Paul's theology on third millennium ministries and there is a, a talk there on Paul and Galatians and it's a really good introduction to the book of Galatians and uh, have a look at Luther's brief uh, Luther's book get hold of his copy you could get it free on PDF uh, on the internet but get yourself a copy of Luther's uh, commentary on um, Galatians and have a read of it and I'm sure it'll be a blessing to you God bless you